Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we are going to get started with our project of building an application from scratch with augmented reality. To get started in this lecture, we are going to build the iOS application for the project and implement augmented reality. So join me in Xcode where we'll select create a new Xcode project. Here we'll be prompted to select a template for our project. The platform is iOS and the application type is app. You can also use the augmented reality app template, but we're going to learn augmented reality from scratch, how to implement it, because that way you'll understand how the actual augmented reality system works for iOS. All right, then we can press next and let's give our product a name. I will call this project our augmented reality from scratch. We will have to select a team. So if you have a team, do select it. Otherwise, I'll show you how you can add in a team later. You'll need a team in order to test augmented reality applications. And to get a team, you just need an Apple account. All right, then you'll have your organization identifier. This could be any URL. And our interface will be Swift UI and the language Swift. Then you can press the next button and you'll be prompted to save your application. So I'll save mine. You can then press create. That will allow you to actually save the project in that desired folder. Now the project is loading up. Xcode is creating the project and shortly it will be ready. We just created your standard iOS application and we'll add in the augmented reality together. So when the project has loaded, you can pop open contentview.swift. This here is just your standard content view. It's just rendering hello world, a piece of text in your app. You can also change the simulator that you're using. Note that for augmented reality, you will have to have an actual device like an iPhone or an iPad because simulator will allow you to just preview your content view, your basic iOS app, but you can't preview augmented reality in the simulator or in the preview. So you will need an actual device. All right, let's get started in content view. Here we just have your typical content view struct. At the top of the file, I'm going to import AR kit, which will allow us to use the augmented reality kit library. I'm also going to import reality kit as well. All right, then we're going to make a struct called reality kit view. Okay, just make sure you spell reality kit correctly. Okay, then let's create a new struct. This will be called reality kit view and it will be of type UI view representable. A UI view representable is a wrapper for a UI kit view that you use to integrate a view into your app. All right, so that is the type for the struct. And similar to a view, which is the content view. In here, we're going to create a function called make UI view. This is to make the actual augmented reality scene. This will take in a context object, the context of the scene, and it's going to return an augmented reality view. This is a view that displays an augmented reality experience, which incorporates content from reality kit. All right, so that is make UI view. In here, we're going to instantiate a constant view and use the class AR view and we'll return the view. All right. 
Now as well, I'm going to have to update the UI view. We'll add that as well for whatever we want to do upon update. And we can add that later. Okay, so we have our here reality kit view, UI view representable. Now you may get prompted here to add protocol stubs, which you can click fix and it'll just fill in update UI view for you. So if you want to build this struct of a reality kit view of type UI view representable, then you do have to here update UI view and make UI view. Okay, and you don't have to put in any code to update UI view for now if you don't want to have any kind of specific update. All right, so there we have our reality kit view struct and our function update UI view as well as make UI view, which returns the augmented reality scene. Inside of this function make UI view, I want to actually start a new augmented reality session. So to do that, I'm going to instantiate a session from the view. So I'm going to create a constant called session and use view dot session. This is the augmented reality session that supports the views rendering. I'm also going to create a configuration using augmented reality world tracking configuration. This is a configuration that tracks the position of a device in relation to objects in the environment. So I'm instantiating an object of that class. Okay, and I can hide my preview because we're going to have to use a real device instead of the preview. Now we have to put to use the session and the config. And I'm going to call session.run. And this is going to start augmented reality processing for the session with the specified configuration and options. And I pass in the config. I also want to set the config's plane detection. This is a value that specifies whether and how the session automatically attempts to detect flat surfaces in the cap camera captured image. So we're detecting planes in our camera. I'm going to detect horizontal planes. So my array is going to search for horizontal, which means the session detects planar surfaces that are perpendicular to gravity. So we're detecting horizontal surfaces like a table or the seat of a chair, horizontal planes. I'm going to also add a coaching overlay. So after I have created the session, I'm going to instantiate a constant coaching overlay and I'm going to instantiate an AR coaching overlay view. This is a view that displays standardized onboarding instructions to direct users toward a specific goal. So we need to help our user go through the application. So that is the AR coaching overlay view. It's going to tell the user how to use the augmented reality app. I'm going to set several properties of coaching overlay like auto resizing mask. This is an integer bit mask that determines how the receiver resizes itself when it super views bounds change. We want to have a flexible size for the scene so that we can work on different devices. So I'm going to set the auto resizing mask to be a list of properties. We have flexible width, which means that the resizing will be performed by expanding or shrinking a view's width. So we want flexible width and also we want flexible height. Okay, that will set the coaching overlay to be able to look good on different devices. I also need to set the coaching overlay session. So I'm going to set its session property. This is the session that this view is going to use to provide the coaching. That will be our session constant that we created together. We're also going to set the goal of the coaching overlay. So coaching overlay dot goal. And this refers to a field that indicates your app's tracking requirements. And I'm going to set it to the horizontal plane, which means that a goal, the goal that's specifying means that our app needs a horizontal plane. So we're going to be looking for horizontal planes. Then we need to add the coaching overlay. So we use view dot add sub view. This will add a view to our whole list of sub views. The view that I want to add is the coaching overlay. As well, now in our content view, we have to change what is being rendered because the content view is actually storing the whole app. So we have to put in the augmented reality scene into the content view instead of this text hello world. So I'm going to remove the text and instead use a reality kit view, right? So that is a new 
instance of the reality kit view and we can say we want to ignore the safe area so we can expand the view all the way to the edge of the screen. Awesome. Okay, so that is how we can create a new augmented reality view with a coaching overlay. Now for this to actually work, if we want to run this, we need a device like an iPhone or an iPad and the device has to be compatible with our version of the project. So if you go to your target, which is the top level element in your project hierarchy, go to deployment info and change the deployment. I'm using iOS 15. Then you'll have to have an iPhone or an iPad that can run at least iOS 15 if that is your deployment. So choose your deployment version. I'm using iOS 15 for this project. Your device will have to have at least iOS 15 if your project deployment is iOS 15. Now before we can run this, we do have to set several other metadata. So one thing that we have to set is we have to enable the camera on our testing device. And we also need to sign in to a personal team. So join me in our next lecture where we will set some data for the testing of this app on a real device and then we will test the app together. So join me in our next lecture. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In our previous lecture we built a new iOS application and we implemented augmented reality from scratch. Before we can test the project on a real device we have to set some configurations. We have to enable the camera on the device and we also have to get a team part of the application. We have to set the developer team. So let's do that in this lecture. First, we have to add the ability to use the camera in the application. So we are going to go into the target of the app, which is just the top level element in the project hierarchy and we're going to select info in the different options. Here we can set custom iOS target properties. So we have properties like the bundle name, the bundle identifier, the launch screen, and more. You can add another key to this list just by clicking plus on any of these different elements. So you click on that plus button and that will allow you to add a second or new entry to this list. We're going to call this privacy and then we want to have camera, camera usage description. You can hit tab to auto complete this key. So this is a new entry you want to add privacy, camera usage description. If you can't auto complete it, just type it in. The type is a string and then the value is a description. So we have to set this so that way we can use the camera of our user's device because the camera is a private object. You can't just automatically use your user's camera. You have to actually first get permission from them. So this is how you can ask for permission from every user whenever they launch the app. You ask them for permission. Can we use the camera because it's required for the app? So let's set the description in as the value. So I'm going to set here, this app requires your camera to show the scene. I'm just typing in my description and hitting enter and that will put that in as the value. Okay, so now as long as our user hits accept, we'll be able to use their camera to render the augmented reality scene with their camera. Okay, so we need this for the project one more thing we need is to set the signing and capabilities because if you want to use this project and run it, if you want to run an augmented reality project on a device, you have to have a team and you can get a team just by creating an Apple account. So here under team, select a team. For example, here is my team, Alex Kropova personal team. Okay. And then Apple will create a signing certificate for this team just so that the application is signed. So you have to do this to run an augmented reality app. 
you don't have to do it to run a regular app, but for augmented reality, you do need to have a personal team. So you just sign in with your Apple account and then that will use you as a team. Okay, so that is what we need to start running our application. Now we can run the application on our device. So you have to connect your device to your computer and you can use an iPhone or an iPad. Then you can select the device at the top here. So at the top, you have your app icon, the name of the app, and then where you're running it. So if you click on this, you can actually select what you want to run on. First, you have the simulators, but you can't use the simulator for augmented reality. You have to use a real device. So here I have the device, my device listed. I'm going to select that. So now I'm going to be launching my device my app on my device. So I'm going to press run here and that is going to build and run the project for my device. So here we can see the steps we're building, step 20 out of 36. So just be patient as the application builds. Then the application will actually appear on your phone. It will have the app icon of just this default icon and it will have this name of your project name and you can actually click on it and open it as you would any other app. The first time that you run it, you have to be patient. It will take longer than usual to build and run the app the first time. Also, augmented reality apps can take longer to load. So every time you run it, you do have to be a bit patient. It can take a minute to load. It all depends on your computer and your actual device. Okay, so then you'll get this message running the application on your device name, and you'll be able to see that application appear. Then you can click on the application and you'll be able to open it. And when you do open it, you should be able to give permission to use your camera, and then you will be able to see the augmented reality scene. Just wait for this running to finish. Once it says that it's finished running, then that means your application is ready for testing. So once it's finished running, open the application on your device and you can test it out. You may have to enable your device for testing. And for that, go to your device, go to settings, the settings application then general and device management, and there trust your computer so that way you can run apps from the computer on your device. You'll notice that you can see your world in the camera via the application. This tells me that we've been able to grab the user's camera and render their world. Now we can't actually see the planes that are being detected. So let's add some more code that will allow us to see what planes are being detected via the camera. Here in my editor, I can see that I have started an augmented reality session and I added a coaching overlay. I'm also going to add debug options so that way we can see the planes that are detected. Here I'll use a hashtag if followed by debug and then I'm going to end the if statement with hashtag end if. So what this is doing is if debugging mode is enabled, we'll run certain code. So we'll, it will only work if debugging is enabled. And what we'll do is we'll set view.debug options, which allows us to change the default debugging options. We're going to have a list here where we have that we want to show feature points, which will display a point cloud showing the results of the scene analysis. We'll also use show anchor origins and show anchor geometry. Okay, then let's go ahead and save this. Let's see, make sure that we have everything here available. Show anchors, it should be show anchor origins, okay. Then we can save this file with command S and then let's go ahead and run the project again on our device. And this time we'll be able to see the planes that are detected. So give this a moment to build and run and then open the app again on your 
device and you'll be able to see the planes detected as long as debug mode is enabled that you didn't turn it off. Here we can see our iPhone is displaying our world and now we have this green color appearing. This green represents the planes that are found. We can also see our anchor points that it's using. And if I put my hand into the camera, you can see it will detect my hand using those anchor points. We'll also detect the object that has appeared with that three axes, X, Y, and Z, that will appear on top of the object to show that a new object has appeared in the frame. So that is how we can now see our anchor points, our anchor geometry, and our focus geometry. Join me in our next section where we'll continue this project and we are going to learn how we can show objects in augmented reality, starting with building a focus cursor. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In our previous lecture, we set up our augmented reality project from scratch. In this lecture, we're starting a new section where we continue with our project. In this section, we're going to learn how to add different elements to the augmented reality scene, such as starting off a focus cursor. This is a three-dimensional cursor, which will allow a user to click on a place in the scene. Now, we don't have to create the cursor from scratch. We can use sample code from Apple that's been ported to Reality Kit. And in Reality Kit, a scene is composed of entities, which are objects in the scene. And you can configure these using components, which add behavior and appearance and properties to the objects of the scene. We are going to add a new object, and that will be the focus cursor, via a focus entity package that's pre-created for us. So let's go into our project details. So here at the top of our file structure here, select your project, and then select the project name here as well. So I'm under my top level element in my file structure in Nextcode and I've selected the project instead of the target. Okay, so I'm configuring the Xcode project. What I want to configure here are package dependencies. Currently, we have zero package dependencies. A package dependency is a package that your project uses. For example, instead of creating the whole project from scratch, I could use packages that have pieces of code that allow me to quickly implement some kind of feature into my app. So it's useful to use packages instead of just building everything from scratch. Let's use a popular package for a focus cursor. Here to add a new package to the list, you just press the plus button. Here you can search for Apple Swift packages. So you can search or enter a package URL. I'm going to search for focus entity and let's see if we can get it. If you can't find it via its name, then just put in, let's see, focus entity. You can put in the actual direct package URL as well, like https github.com slash max fraser slash focus entity dot get. So once I've entered this, then the, p the proper package appears. If it doesn't appear, then just close this, hit cancel and reopen it and paste in this link again. Okay, so here I have my link to the GitHub page for the package dependency. And GitHub is where many packages are hosted. So here we have our focus entity. This is the one we are going to use. We can see the source of it. We have the dependency rule and we're adding to this project, augmented reality from scratch. Okay. To add the package, you use the button at the bottom right called add package. Okay. Here we are fetching the focus entity package. Once it's been fetched, it will add it to the project. Here we go. So we have to choose a package product for focus entity. We're just using the only one available. We press add package again, and now it's been added to our list of package dependencies. We're using version 2.0.0 to the next major version. 
All right, so there we go. We've added the package. Now we can use elements of the package. We can use the package as a library, which contains code and functions that we can implement. Okay, so we are going to add in focus entity into our content view. So let's go back to content view dot Swift. Here you can see we've imported at the top Swift UI, AR kit, reality kit, and we're going to add our package of focus entity, just like we would add another library. So we just add that to the top of the list here. So we're just using the package as a library. Okay, now let's talk about the AR scene. Whenever our application finds a plane, an anchor is added to the augmented reality world. And we can react to the event with an AR session delegate. So we can react to the event of a plane being found. Here inside of our reality kit view, we have make UI view. Before we return the view, I want to handle augmented reality session events with a delegate. So I'm going to take my context and I'm going to set its coordinator dot view to equal our view. So we here, can see we don't actually have the context here. That's just built in, but we do have this view right here. View dot add sub view also coming from the augmented reality view. So we're taking the context of the app and we're setting its view property. Now you'll get this message value of tuple type void has no member view. That's because by default, this context dot coordinator does not have a view member. So we have to actually create that property for the coordinator. So here I can see I have my content view, my content view previews, and I want to, inside of my reality kit view, I want to create a new function and a new class for the coordinator. So I'm going to create a function called make coordinator. This is going to return a coordinator type. Okay, so this is a type to coordinate with the view. And we can open up the body of the function and here we're going to call the coordinator constructor. Now we have to create the class coordinator. So let's use the class keyword followed by the name coordinator. The type will be an NS object. This is the root class of most objective C class hierarchies from which subclasses inherit a basic interface to the runtime system and the ability to behave as objective C objects. So we will use NS object and also AR session delegate. This has methods you can implement to receive captured video frame images and tracking state from the camera. Right, so here we have AR session delegate. We're going to create a week of our view. This will be of type AR view. This is a view that displays an augmented reality experience that incorporates content from reality kit. We'll also have a variable focus entity. This will be of type focus entity. Then we'll have a function session, right? So here, this will instantiate that session. So you, this will take in an augmented reality session and then some did add anchors. We'll use that one right here. So this will tell the delegate that one or more anchors have been added to the session. All right, so we're going to be taking in an augmented reality session and did add. Then the code in here for the session, we want to add the anchor to the scene. So I'm going to use guard let view equals self dot view. Otherwise we'll return. So we want to make sure that a view exists. And afterward, we are going to here call self.focus entity. And we are going to here instantiate a new focus entity. And that will be a new object. We'll have this on the view. The style will be dot classic. And we can set a color like dot orange. This will be the color of the cursor. Right, the cursor will be on the view and that will be its style. Feel free to set whatever color you want, whatever style type you want. All right, great. So here we have made the coordinator and remember we're using that for setting the context.coordinator.view. Now that we've built our coordinator, we need one more line in order to see the focus cursor and we have to set the session delegate. 
So inside of the make UI view function, we have to set the session.delegate. A delegate is an object you provide to receive video and tracking information or respond to changes in the session status. We're going to set that to equal the context.coordinator and that will allow us to see the focus cursor. So now you can save and run your project and you'll be able to see an orange square on your app and this will be in the world and that is the focus cursor and the point of the focus cursor is for you to be able to click on it and use it as your hand or as your mouse in the augmented reality world. Join me in our next lecture. We are going to use this focus cursor to be able to place an augmented reality object into the scene whenever there is a tap on the screen on the focus cursor. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In our previous lecture, we learned how to add a focus cursor into our application. In this lecture, we're going to learn how we can enable some object to appear when we tap on the screen in the app. So we can actually create an augmented reality object dynamically. Join me in our content view. Here we have our reality kit view and we have make UI view. In make UI view, before we return the view, we're going to add a gesture recognizer in order to handle taps. So I'm going to grab view and add to it a gesture recognizer. And here we have to pass in the type of UI gesture recognizer. The gesture that we are recognizing is a tap. So we'll use the UI tap gesture recognizer. In here, we are going to pass in several arguments to the tap recognizer. We are going to pass in a target, which will be here the context.coordinator. So that will be our app. And the action is going to take a selector and it will use the coordinator.handle tap. So we're going to handle the action with the coordinator. So inside of our coordinator, we have to build a function called handle tap if we want this to actually work. So scroll down to your coordinator and in the coordinator here, we are going to create a new at, here we go, we have the at object function handle tap, then we have the body of the function. First, we are going to grab the variables that we need with a guard let statement. We want our view to equal self dot view. Then we want here after word focus entity to equal self dot focus entity. Otherwise, we are going to return out if we can't get one of the variables. We're going to create a new anchor to add the object to. So I'm going to instantiate a new anchor entity. An anchor tethers virtual content to a real world object in an AR session. So you can place an object in the world and if you move the camera, the object won't move. The object will stay where it was created. So here we have our anchor entity. All right, after the anchor entity, we're going to append the anchor to our list of anchors. So we'll take view.scene.anchors and we're going to append the anchor that we just created. All right, then we can build our object. This object we can just build from scratch or we could use a model. Let's use something we build from scratch. So I'm going to create a cube and here I'm going to use a mesh resource to build out a 3D model just via Swift. So I'm going to generate a box. This will generate a box mesh. We can pass in the size, which is the length of each side, like 0 0.3. And we can pass in a corner radius of 0 0.03. If we don't want a 
cube that is perfectly cornered if we want a bit of a soft corner or a curved corner. Okay, then we have to create the material for the cube. So we'll here let material equal a simple material. This will allow you to put some texture or color onto your cube. We can pass in a color, let's do dot orange, and then we can pass in is metallic as an example of a texture. All right, then we have to create a model entity from our mesh. So I'm going to create here a cube entity variable and I'm going to use the model entity class. This is a representation of a physical object that Reality Kit will render and simulate. The mesh that we pass in will be our cube. The materials, we pass in a list of the materials and we just have one. And that is the material variable that we created. Then we can set the position of the cube entity with the position property. Let's set it to be the position of our focus cursor. Okay. So we have our cube and our material turned into a model entity. And we are going to add the entity to our scene with the anchor.addChild. And then we add in the cube entity. So that will make sure that the element is in a fixed place in the world. Now let's run the application and we can check that when we tap on the screen, we are going to be able to see orange cubes appear where we tapped and they will remain in the position of where we initially placed them around our room. Here we can see I have my app open and our plane is being detected with that green color. Then if I tap inside of my orange focus cursor, a orange cube is added into the world. And if I move the camera around, the cubes don't move with me. The cubes stay where they're supposed to be in the world. Join me in our next lecture where we will learn how we can enable model physics. So how we can take that cube and enable it to move around in the world. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. Previously, we learned how to build an augmented reality object upon the tap on the screen of our app. In this lecture, we're going to enable model physics. So that way, our object in the scene can actually move around in the world. So here I am inside of my content view, and I'm going to go into the location of where I actually created a cube entity. First thing I need to do is to get the size of the cube. And I'm going to here create a variable called my cube bounds. Then I'm going to use cube entity dot visual bounds. This will calculate a bounding box for the object. So it will grab its size relative to the cube entity. And we're going to grab its extents dot y. So we want the size on the y axis and we have a cube. So it'll be the same on all of the other axes as well, because a cube has all sides being of equal length. Okay, next up, we are going to create a collider. So that way reality kit can check for collisions. So here I have my cube bounds. I'm going to then create here a cube shape and I'm going to use shape resource, which is a representation of a shape and I'm going to generate a box. The box shape needs a size. So we want to use cube bounds for all three of those values. So you can just repeat cube bounds three times. Okay, and make sure you put the size here into a list, not just three values. The size has to be passed in as a list. Next, we have to grab the collision. So I'm going to grab our cube entity and set its collision property. So this will allow us to process collisions so we can check if the box collides with something. And we're going to create a new collision component. 
This is a component that gives an object the ability to collide with other objects. For the collision component, we have to pass in the shapes, and this will be a list. And here we're going to pass in our cube shape. The shape means the shape of the collider. A collider is just an invisible object around the cube acting as a sort of cloak. And then that collider is going to process the collisions for the object that's wearing the collider. Next, we're going to enable physics. So I'm going to grab my cube entity and set the physic body, physics body property. Physics body is a component used for physics simulation of the model object in accordance with the laws of Newtonian physics. So we are setting physics body to equal physics body component. This is a component that defines an object's behavior in physics body simulations. All right, so that is a new object. And here let's pass in the parameters for the object. We want to pass in the mass properties. This will create a physics body with mass properties. We'll also pass in a material and a mode. So these are the three arguments we'll pass in. First, we need a physics mass properties. So here we're going to initial, initialize a new properties. We'll pass in a shape, which will be our cube shape and a mass, you can use 30. This, is, this represents how heavy is the cube, and we have 30. You can experiment with different masses and the cube will behave as though it were heavier. Next, for a material, we can just leave that as empty, nil. And for the mode, we have a physics body mode. You can choose dynamic, kinematic, or static. Let's choose dynamic as the physics mode. All right, so there we go. Now we have added in a cube entity with physics and collisions. Okay, you can also enable show physics in your debug options if you want to see an outline of the collider. So that's just under view debug options in your code. Let's save this file and let's run it on our device. And now we'll be able to see our cube. And this time you'll actually see it falling down instead of staying in place. The reason being that now the cube is going to follow the rules of Newtonian physics. So it's going to follow the law of gravity. Therefore, it's going to fall down. Now it's not going to stop falling actually because we have no ground officially in the game or in the app. So after this, we are going to add a ground or a plane below the cube. So that way the cube will actually fall and then stop falling. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In our previous lecture, we enabled physics on our cube. And in this lecture, we're going to build a plane so that the cube doesn't fall endlessly. It falls and then it stops once it hits the ground. So for that, we will create a plane as our ground. Join me back in our content view. And here we're going to add some more code into our function handle tap. So when we have a tap that creates a new cube, the cube gets physics and then the cube starts falling. Then we want to catch it with a plane. So here I am going to create a plane. We are going to create a variable called a plane mesh and we will use a mesh resource to generate a plane with a width and a depth. The width and depth are floats, so let's pass in here some width such as 2 and a depth of 2. So that creates a small plane. We can then put a color for the plane. So here I'm going to create a variable plane material and I'm going to instantiate a new simple material with a color and also is it metallic. So for the color here, we have to pass in a simple material color. I'm going to just initialize a new color. We'll set it to be white and we can give it some alpha value as well for transparency. Then we have is metallic, which we'll set to false. We don't need our plane to be metallic. Okay, now we are going to put these to use 
these two variables that will also remove the warnings. So we put them to use by creating a model entity. So here I'm going to create a plain entity variable and instantiate a new model entity. This takes in a mesh as well as any materials which are optional. The mesh is a mesh resource and this is going to be our plain mesh. The materials are a list of type material. So I'm just going to pass in a list with our plain material in it. Okay, there we go. That will instantiate the plain entity. Then we want to set the position of the plane. So I'm going to set plane entity dot position to equal our focus entity dot position. So it's where our focus cursor was. We'll also give it physics. So I'm going to grab the plane entity and set its property of physics body, a component used for physics simulations. And set that equal to a new physics body component a component that defines an entity's behavior in physics. And here we're going to pass in some mass properties, material, and mode for the physics body component. So for the physics mass properties, we're going to just use the default mass properties just for simplicity. For the material, let's just use no material. And then for the mode, we're going to use dot static. So this body will never move because it's just a ground. Then let's enable collisions on the plane. So I'm going to grab the plane entity and I am going to set its collision property. We're going to instantiate a new collision component, a component that gives an entity the ability to collide with other entities. Here we'll pass in shapes and we want to use generate box to generate a box shape. The size here, we can just pass in generate box. We'll give it a width of two. Let's give it a height of 0 0.002 and a depth of two, All right? So we have that collision box. Then we are going to reset and reset the position. So we'll set plane entity dot position to equal focus entity dot position. And following that, I need to take my anchor and add a child to it. The child is the plane entity, so I'm adding the plane to my anchors. Okay, so that will create the plane. So now we can run the application. Hit run in the top left corner and open up the application on your device. And you'll see this time the cube is going to fall, but it will stop on the plane. Coming up next, we are going to be able to manipulate the cubes. We'll be able to move it around and roll it in the world. So join me in the next lecture. Welcome back to our course. In our previous lecture, we learned how to build a plane to catch cubes so that they don't fall endlessly. Feel free to experiment with this actual plane. You can make it a bit larger here in the plane mesh resource and also in the collision component. If you make this larger in terms of width and depth, then you'll be able to catch more of the cubes. You can also make its height larger if you make if you want to just ensure that cubes never fall endlessly because sometimes they do fall endlessly if they are created, but then they are created off of the focus entity. All right, now in this lecture, we're going to finish up this project by learning how to interact with the objects. So we are going to add some force and torque so that way when we tap on one of the cubes, we're going to roll them. So we'll send them spinning. For that, join me back in our content view. We'll continue on inside of our on tap function. We have our cube being created and we have the cube bounds, the cube physics. Next, I want to add some force and torque to the cube. So I'm going to take the cube entity and I'm going to add some force to it upon a tap. Okay, here I'll have in it and I'm going to put in the force amount like zero, one, and zero. And we can say this is relative to nil, so nothing. We can also add some torque, so some spinning with cube entity dot add torque. Feel free to apply more forces than just a basic force and a torque to send them 
moving up or in the X, Y, and Z direction, however you'd like, and then spinning. Okay, for torque, I'm going to use random torque so that way the movement will be random each time. Relative to no entity, so we'll put in nil for that. Then for the torque value, I'm going to use init here to initialize a series of values for x, y, and z. How much torque do I want on all three axes? I'm going to use float.random to generate a random float between 0 and 0 0.3. Then let's do the same for the y and the z axes. I'm going to pass in here a float.random in a range of 0 to 0 0.3. So we have the torque for the x and the y and then finally for the z. So we'll use float.random in 0 up to 0 0.3. All right, then we can go ahead and fix the alignment of the code here. And there we have it. We have our torque values and then relative to nothing. So now we can save this. That means that when the cube is tapped, we'll have some force and some torque applied to it. Here I'm going to run my app and we'll be able to see this in action. So now when we generate a cube, if we tap on it, it will be sent rolling. Feel free to experiment more with how much movement you want to give the cubes. You can change this force amount. You can also change the torque amount. You can also apply other forces than just a regular force and a torque. You can experiment with how you want your objects to move when a user taps on them. And you can also listen for other types of interactions. You don't have to just listen for a tap. You can listen for other interactions as well. So there's a lot you could do from this standard basic project where we learned how to build an object in augmented reality and how to interact with it. So you can take what you learned in this project and expand on it to make this a larger app or to try out different augmented reality features. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you want to watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only will you get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle. And it's on sale today. So buy it before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.